Welcome back all my certified benzene lovers and today is going to be a video for you where we turn styrofoam into benzene. So I was on a mission to find an over-the-counter method to make benzene. So you know there's the sodium benzoate method which is very common you can find it all over YouTube so it's kind of boring and I didn't want to do that method and I was thinking of other sources of benzene like aromatics such as toluene and xylene but I still didn't kind of want to do these methods because they're still kind of covered and then I got thinking, what's another great source of benzene type aromatics? And the answer to that is styrofoam, AKA polystyrene. So here's our structure of polystyrene here. It's just a bunch of styrene monomers linked together. But we do have an issue. We first need to break these apart to get smaller molecules out so we can begin the process of extracting our benzene. So to do that, I'm gonna use pyrolysis. And all pyrolysis really is, is heating a substance in an inert atmosphere. And this causes it to break apart into smaller molecules. And that's what we're gonna do with our polystyrene. And well, I had to go out earlier to run some errands. And while I was out, I decided to stop at some stores and check their dumpsters to find some styrofoam. Found these massive blocks of styrofoam, which will be plenty of polystyrene to make our benzene. So first we gotta condense down our styrofoam because for the most part, it's mainly air at the moment. So we gotta dissolve it into a solvent. So to this dish, I'm just going to add some acetone and that should be enough to start off right there. Now it's time to add our styrofoam. This is very satisfying dissolving the styrofoam into the acetone. like those slime videos it's actually um it's very satisfying <laughs> really satisfying so, after a bit of drying it's um nighttime now so it's been a couple hours our polystyrene goop has dried quite a bit um there's still some solvent in there but not that big of a deal as long as most of the solvent's out um, just because in the flask, if not all the solvent's out, it will foam over quite a bit. So most of it's out, that's good, and it's dried pretty well. But it's going to be a pain in the ass to get all this out of here. But I'm going to go ahead and break this up and then add it to our 1,000 milliliter round bottom flask. So we're all ready to go, and I'm going to set this up for a simple distillation. And we got to heat this to around 400 C and maintain at that temperature. 400 C will get the most liquid fraction over, which is what we want to get our most aromatics over. So yeah, let's go ahead and set that up. She's all lit. This is gonna be a really messy process. Um, yeah, this is gonna, not gonna be fun glassware to clean when this is done. But I'll come back to you guys when we start getting our pyrolysis oil. What is going on in our pyrolysis of polystyrene? So here's our molecule of polystyrene here. And under high temperature and without an oxygen atmosphere, our polystyrene is gonna to begin to break apart. And without an oxygen atmosphere under this high temperature, right, oxygen's not gonna be able to react with it, so it's not going to burn. And this is the good thing, because if it burns, it's just gonna to turn to CO2 and water vapor. For the most part, under this high temperature, the bonds between the aromatic rings are going to break apart because our aromatic rings are very stable because again, aromatic rings are resonant stabilized. So they're much more stable compared to the linkages between the aromatic rings. So we can expect these bonds to start breaking first. When these bonds start breaking, a bunch of different chemical reactions can happen. It creates essentially a chemical soup. But for the most part, we're going to maintain our aromatics. So we can get like mono substituted aromatics, di substituted aromatics. We can even get some benzene in there. We'll get like ethyl benzene and stuff like that. So that's what we'll expect to get over in our liquid fraction. And then some other simple hydrocarbons can come over too. Here's a graph of all of the characterized um, liquid fractions that come over in the pyrolysis of polystyrene. So you see there's quite a bit of different molecules that have been characterized in this reaction. So this is why this is a good starting point for getting our polystyrene into a usable liquid that we can then further refine into our benzene. Okay, we're now pushing up around 115 C. Here's how our flask is looking. You see we're definitely getting some liquid, but quite a bit of pyrolysis oil and a decent steady flow. So yeah, coming along pretty good. Okay, I added some tin foil and the distillation's going really good. Had to, uh, um, instead of the thermometer, I replaced it with a glass stir rod because the thermometer was um, maxing out essentially. So yeah, we're in with a glass stir rod now and we are getting a lot of liquid over now. 
It's also good to do this at night because we're probably getting a lot of styrene monomer in there. And um, well, UV light can catalyze that to repolymerize back into polystyrene. And well, that would be a big mess if that turned back into polystyrene in the flask. Okay, our distillation's done. That's what's left in the flask, just some garbage. And bam, there's our pyrolysis oil, and we actually got quite a bit of it. That's about 250 milliliters. Smells like burning, burning styrofoam. <laughs> it's the best way I could describe it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and distill this again and collect up to about 200 C fraction. And that will be the one we keep because up to 200 C is our practically our mono substituted aromatics, a little bit of dye substituted aromatics, and things of the such. Up, up, and away. Okay, so our final yield is 136 grams. This mainly consists of probably styrene would be the main constituent of this. And it is a little cloudy still. That is just because there is some water in there, but that is no issue and will not affect anything in this reaction. Okay, so now we must oxidize our aromatic juice into benzoic acid. So based on our weight of this, assuming this is styrene, which is what I based my molar calculations on, um, because for the most part, this is just mostly styrene, we're going to need 206 grams of potassium permanganate. Here we go, 206. Okay, so now we're just going to dissolve in water. Now at room temperature, potassium permanganate is not very soluble. So it's probably not going to fully dissolve at this temperature, but that is fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour it into this 1000 milliliter round bottom glass. Now I'm going to go ahead and add all of our aromatic juice. So as you might can see, the solution is actually already starting to turn a little brown here at the layer with the organic. And that is because potassium permanganate is oxidizing our organic layer and is then turning into manganese dioxide. Anyway, I'm going to set up for a reflux, making some weird colors. And I'm letting it reflux. We're going to give this about three hours. Okay, it's the next morning. So you see all of our manganese dioxide coating our flask. I made this evaporative cooler overnight because the water was getting pretty hot. Um, so yeah, actually, I'm, I'm kind of um, happy with how that came out. Um, just a screen in the bucket. Um, yes, I'd say it worked um, pretty good actually. And I took a sample from the flask and placed it in here and diluted it with some water. As you can see, no purple permanganate is left, which is perfect. It's just the brown manganese dioxide. Okay, so now we just got to vacuum filtrate our solution. And then we should get our potassium benzoate and our solution on the bottom. And we got our manganese dioxide on the top. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, as I was sitting here too, I was just thinking that the potassium permanganate actually should be slightly radioactive. Which back on here hovers around about 35 counts per minute. So yeah, we're around 70, 80 counts per minute for the potassium permanganate. And that's just obviously because there's potassium in it and there's natural isotope potassium 40, which makes it radioactive. So, just a cool thing, potassium permanganate is slightly radioactive. Okay, so here's our filtrate. Now all we gotta do is acidify the solution with hydrochloric acid, which will protonate our potassium benzoate and form the benzoic acid. And this will also form potassium chloride in this reaction. And let it rip. There you go, you can already see it forming. And it's not very soluble in water at all, that's why you're going to see it foam right to the surface like that. And it's turning pink. Let's go ahead and do a vacuum filtration on these. So there's our benzoic acid. So to make our sodium benzoate, I'm just gonna add this concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide to deprotonate this. And this will turn it into the water soluble sodium benzoate. Let's add it very slowly. Okay, here's our final sodium benzoate solution and now we just gotta boil it down and see how much we get. We'll probably get a little bit of sodium hydroxide too because the solution is still very alkaline but that's fine because um, turn into our benzene we're gonna need a sodium hydroxide anyway. Okay here's our final sodium benzoate. Um, it ain't much but it should be enough to get a very tiny amount of benzene but it's all we need and I think it's possible. So let's go ahead and set this up for a distillation. So we have about 10 grams of sodium benzoate, which is such a small amount. And I went ahead and mixed it with six grams of sodium hydroxide. 
I'm gonna go ahead and move it to this round bottom flask. Okay, the distillation's all set up and ready. Again, not preferably to use glass for this because it will etch the glass pretty well. Nothing mission critical will be able to be used in this round bottom again, but it was cheap, so don't have a paint can distiller this small for this. Come through the condenser, come down here to this. Not a closed system. Yesterday I did find out on my glass area repair um, that there is a small hole in there so the pressure can vent. So yeah, hopefully this works and we should get a very teensy small amount of benzene, but yeah, styrofoam to benzene. So let's hope this works. I'm gonna use this blowtorch flame to heat it. Now this will be just a simple decarboxylation. We'll decarboxylate our sodium benzoate and that will produce benzene, which then we'll just distill over. I'm actually surprised at the amount of benzene we are getting from this. I'm actually surprised, very surprised. I'm happy with this, very happy with this. We're doing good, we're doing good. I guess the natural benzene, I'm going to add some anhydrous calcium chloride to help dry it out because there's quite a bit of water in there. You see there, we have our benzene layer on top and then we'll set this up for a second distillation to purify it. Okay, it is distillation time. I'm just gonna use the blowtorch again and gently heat this and then we should get our benzene, purified benzene. Spilled half of my benzene. Uh. After spilling half of it, just imagine twice this amount. It's still yellow because I didn't bother to re-clean. I didn't want to clean all this shit again for the second distillation because they're just too close together. So it did pick up some stuff in the distillation. It's still a little bit yellow, but this is our benzene. It's yellow benzene, the best benzene there is. Thanks for watching.